Pope Francis isn't the first pope to visit the East Coast. Baltimore enjoyed a visit from Pope St. John Paul II 20 years ago. The Holy Father said Mass at Oriel Park at Camden Yards. During his visit, the pontiff also met with members of Catholic Relief Services and gave an address at the Cathedral of Mary Our Queen. Before we leave you, here's another look at the major events happening during the Holy Father's visit. His trip kicks off Wednesday when he holds midday prayers with the bishops, including Archbishop Lori. On Thursday morning, Pope Francis will speak before Congress, followed by a visit at Catholic Charities. He then heads off to New York City, where he'll address the United Nations on Friday morning before holding Mass at Madison Square Garden. On Saturday, the pontiff will say Mass at the Basilica before visiting the Festival of Families. Then on Sunday, Pope Francis will say Mass to an estimated one million people on the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. Music will play a starring role in Washington, D.C. during the Pope's visit. And for some Maryland musicians who will share the stage with the Pope, they're hoping to hit every syllable, every note just right. 11 News Kate Amara sits in with the Papal Mass Choir as they got down to work. I never thought I would be at a Mass with the Pope, but nevertheless singing for him in a choir that is going to be a part of the whole celebration. Like, it's huge. Jordan Richards' voice is one of 90 filling St. Mark's the Evangelist Church in Hyattsville on this Monday night. She is a member of the Papal Mass Choir. And this is their first practice. Something you can explain, you know, is very, is, is very important for me. The choir is one of five that will sing at the Mass during Pope Francis's visit to Washington, D.C. in September. I want to see the Pope, you know. I want to see him, even though I, I, I am very far away from where he is, but just to see him, to, to feel like he's next to me. They will be accompanying His Holiness, singing pieces by Aaron Copeland, as well as 19 new compositions, many by regional composers. I think it's really special that we're getting to share that particular composition on the morning of the Mass, kind of as our contribution to this celebration of the Americas. While the music represents the host and the visitor, choir director Thomas Staley says the choir represents the diversity of this area. These singers were chosen from 330 who auditioned back in May and who have committed to a rigorous rehearsal schedule and lots of homework too. We're really on a journey now that is going to take us to that uh, uh, that day. But this choir isn't thinking of that day as a performance. For them, it is a prayer for and with the Pope through music. It has a way of reaching a person's soul, a heart. I mean, we all know uh, something that is sung is very different if it's just spoken. Imagine if all you did on, on a birthday is say, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. But when you sing it, it transforms it into another thing. In Hyattsville, I'm Kate Amara. Well, here's something to look out for. This will be an outdoor event, so no ceilings, no walls. The choir members won't really be able to hear each other, so the director has organized them into small groups. You'll see them right around the altar just so they can hear. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of 11 TV Hill, Preparing for the Pope. We leave you now with a glimpse into the life of Pope Francis, the people's pope. And stay with us throughout the week as we provide you with special coverage of his visit to the United States. Thank you, everyone. I'm Jason Newton for 11 TV Hill.